What up, YouTube? My name is Cherise. Welcome to Reese TV. Glad that you're here. And welcome to another episode of Makeup News, where I tell the news as I do my makeup. So let's make up and get right into it. So, Jonathan Majors broke his silence. And we got to see a whole six minutes of it. <sighs> ah! But it was a good start, wasn't it? Like, as you know, I was worried before. I was worried about how Disney was going to cut it and they did a very good job. They answered questions. None of the questions seemed like they were accusatory. None of the questions seemed malicious. The questions were very relaxed, very open. Lindsay is a good interviewer. Great job, Lindsay. So far. Whew. So, what have we learned? So we learned his perspective as to what happened in the vehicle that very night. What actually happened was that, yes, he got a text and Grace did not like the text and she tried to pry it out of his hand. What he revealed is that she tried and she failed. <laughs> she did not get the phone at all. But what she did do was cut his hand trying to get the phone. He mentioned that she put her body on his and she grabbed his face. His testimony as to what happened in the car, that is consistent with his injuries, right? We saw the cuts on his hand, right? We saw the cuts on his face. So it makes sense that yeah, this actually happened. All the injuries that she sustained is not consistent with her testimony. So, as Cat Williams would say, that is a fat Faison lie. <laughs> she is a fat Faison liar. <laughs> oh my goodness, I love that interview. But I'll talk about that interview a lot later because this takes precedent. I don't see the Cat Williams interview going away anytime soon. Like that is going to be an evergreen subject, right? So, other things that he said, he took accountability. He took accountability for being in the relationship, that he should not have been in the relationship. That's something that we said, right? That he shouldn't have been in a relationship. He also said that there were plenty of red flags that said that he should not have been in a relationship. That's something that we said, right? He took accountability for his actions in the relationship. He said that the relationship was toxic. Even though he loved Grace, the relationship was toxic. He should have not been in that relationship. We agree. <laughs> that is something that we said. Oh my goodness, I am so happy that he said that. Now, what was surprising about what he said was that about the text messages, it is something that he has been dealing with since he was a boy. He has been dealing with the thought of deleting himself. That was surprising to me mainly because I wouldn't expect that from a man who says that he's great. But we don't know when somebody wants to delete themselves, right? Like take Robin Williams, for example. Beautiful man, beautiful person, and he deleted himself. So we don't know what the face of somebody offing themselves looks like. And this is the perfect time to say, hey, if you feel like offing yourself, call a hotline. If you do a Google search, you'll find a hotline, you'll find uh, a way of just text messaging somebody, you'll find um, sites that will help. If you feel that way, get some help. Jonathan Majors is known to have gotten help. He is actively in therapy trying to delete the thoughts of deleting himself. That is something that Grace Jabari knew about and she weaponized it. What? How do you weaponize this thought? How do you weaponize something that somebody told you in confidence, right? If you really love that person, you are not going to weaponize it. And I understand they weaponized it because of something that was said before. And the prosecutors needed to show why she didn't call the police right away. But that was wrong. And there's a YouTuber named Kat who has shown publicly the transcripts 
from the trial. And you will see there that there were some things that were in the text that were redacted, that were never shown. So it goes back to what I said, right? There were things that were in that text that were not discussed, that were not shown. Like there had to have been something missing. And lo and behold, yes, there was something that was missing. I like that he took accountability for the recording. I like that he took accountability for knocking down the candle. He mentioned he lost his temper. He got mad. He did that. It's not one of his proudest moments. He didn't shy away from it whatsoever. Right? And and here is where you see the difference between him and Grace Jabari, right? Every time that her drinking came up, he's like, it's no big deal, right? Every time he's mad at me, he's always bringing up my drinking. Yes, he is because that is a big problem. You have shown it over and over again that you get sloppy when you drink, right? It's a problem. You have a drinking problem. But she never took accountability for that, right? But did he take accountability for his temper? Yeah. Oh, and then about the other people who supposedly were abused by him. He recounted those relationships. He was like, I haven't been in many relationships, so I know exactly who you're talking about. And yes, I was a jerk, but I never laid hands on anyone. Accountability. Yes, I was a jerk. I was 20. <laughs> I was a jerk, right? Like when he said that, all I could think of was what one of my teachers said to me. In college, one of my teachers told me was that I was not as obnoxious as I was when I first came into college. She said that right in my face. She was like, you're not as obnoxious as you were. I'm like, oh, thanks. So I'm still obnoxious, <laughs> but I'm not as obnoxious as I was. Okay, given. And I admit, there were some things that I could have said differently. I'm not gonna get it always right. I'm human. And guess what? Your mind is not fully developed until you are 25. It's amazing how we as a society believe that we are supposed to have our whole lives put together in our 20s. Like, there is no way. There is no way. We can't have it all together before 25 because our brains are not developed by 25. You get me? When Rolling Stone was saying, oh, there are 40 complaints about abuse. Okay. 40? 40? That don't make sense. Like, I don't know one person who has been in 40 different relationships. I'm not saying that it's not possible, but by 34, you have 40 relationships? What? You have a baby mama. You most likely don't have 40 relationships because that thought process that you have a kid is already going to deter relationships. It's just a question as to who the heck paid Rolling Stone. Like Rolling Stone, like I see you now. I see who you are. You have revealed who you are to all of us, okay? Your journalistic abilities has been seen. I don't know how you're gonna come back from this, but dude, dude. Any case, time to do the eyes. Am I the only one who feels like laughing every time that she has to do her eyeliner? Cause yeah, it, this, is, this is ticklish. This is really ticklish. So what I do is that I internalize all the laughter. Like I am literally laughing in my head, hysterically. Like I am holding every bit of how much I want to laugh while I'm putting on the eyeliner. So, so far, this was a great interview. We only got six minutes of it. Supposedly we're supposed to get the rest of it later on tonight. As I'm recording this, this is Monday. <laughs> Monday the 8th of January. So as you know my schedule, you're gonna see this next Monday and most likely this is going to keep on for the rest of January because of how this is being released. How this interview went, I am pretty certain that they are going to rehire him. I believe wholeheartedly now that they did actually fire him. Only because they said it in an interview that Disney dropped him. However, I do believe that they will rehire him. And this is why I believe so. Two words, James Gunn. So I'm not sure if you knew this because I did. 
James Gunn was fired by Disney back in 2018. He was fired for things that he said on Twitter. So I looked up what James Gunn said on Twitter back in 2010 and oh my God. James Gunn, what were you thinking? And the thing is, they rehired him. They rehired him for Guardians of the Galaxy 3. And then he dropped Disney and he went on to be the Kevin Feige of DC. So it makes me wonder if that is a foreshadow as to what is going to happen this time around. If that is what's going to happen with Jonathan Majors. And the reason why he was rehired, according to Disney, was because he gave an apology, or more so he took accountability for his actions. And he never blamed Disney for firing him. So what did we see from the interview? We saw Jonathan Majors take accountability for his actions. He took accountability for even being in a relationship for that long. After seeing so many red flags, he took accountability for doing that. He says that he shouldn't even have been in the car, that all this shouldn't even have happened because he should have been man enough to get out of the relationship. Now, like I said before, relationships like that, it's hard to get out of. It seems so easy from the outside in. Like if you see all these red flags, get out. But for the people who are in the relationship, who are emotionally invested in the relationship, it's a lot harder. So if you find yourself in this type of relationship, get out. This is your sign to get out. Get out or else you might find yourself in the same position. And the second thing that we see that Jonathan Majors did, he never blamed Disney for firing him. Never did. So. What does that mean for his future? This is what I think it's going to mean. I think, as we said before, they're gonna rehire him. King Dynasty isn't supposed to come out until 2026, right? So they still have time. And I feel like if we take the same blueprint from James Gunn, Disney is just fast forwarding the process with Jonathan Majors, right? So it took Disney a whole year and for James Gunn to apologize for Disney to rehire James Gunn. So this is already going faster than James Gunn. So Jonathan Majors was dropped by Disney right after the verdict. And that verdict happened in December. Jonathan Majors has already taken accountability for his actions. And he did that here in January. And so it is a good possibility that Disney is going to rehire him as Kane. And then after Kang, Jonathan Majors is going to go to DC and he's gonna be Jon Stewart. I mean, that's what I'm hoping because he's a perfect Jon Stewart, right? I mean, this is what we've been waiting for, right? We've been waiting for Jon Stewart. That is the only Green Lantern that matters. I mean, you can say that Hal Jordan, he is significant. He is important because he introduces the whole concept of Green Lantern, but of every other adaptation of Green Lantern that matters, right? Every series that comes out, which Green Lantern do we see the most? Jon Stewart. That's all we care about is Jon Stewart. And Jonathan Majors is the perfect Jon Stewart. So, timeline. Disney is going to rehire Jonathan Majors. He's going to play King for King Dynasty. And then he's going to jump over to DC to be Jonathan Stewart. I mean, of course, that's just a theory, a film theory. Okay, I probably can't say that, right? <laughs> Copywritten. But that is a film hypothesis. Yeah, I'm not going to say that other word because that would be copyright infringement, right? But that's my thoughts right now. He is going to be the next John Stewart. Mark my words. So do I think that his career is over? As you can guess, no. I don't think that his career is over. What I have said about what's going to happen will be true. And I do look forward to the rest of the interview, but I'm happy with the clip that was shown so far of him taking accountability for his actions. 
that's a great start. And I love that Megan Good has stayed by him. I did find that she came out of left field. It was like, oh, he's dating who? And by the timeline, it really does seem like she might have been Cleopatra, but we have no idea when she came into his life. We do know it happened sometime after the March incident, but it would be wrong of me to judge negatively. Jonathan Majors and Megan Good because I lived that situation. My husband and I, we started dating not too long after I got out of a previous relationship. And people speculated that I was cheating on my previous boyfriend. I wasn't cheating on him at all with my now husband, but I do understand their viewpoint. The timeline was just way too close. So I understand their mindset but I do understand how it feels to be in that situation. So if they found love with each other, they found love with each other. Who are we to judge negatively about their relationship? If they are happy, they are happy. And it seems like he's happy. He called her an angel. He believes that she's the one. And she sat there with compassionate eyes, never really taking her eyes away from him, at least from what we saw. And she was gorgeous too. That makeup was on point. Talking about makeup, I'm done with my makeup and I'm happy with it and I got to go. So until next time, I will catch you later. Goodbye, 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 goodbye.